Rock Hudson was one of the hottest actors in Hollywood in the 1950s, who often fell in love with beauties like Doris Day and Jane Wyman on screen. But behind the camera, he was a closeted gay man. In an era less accepting of homosexuality, the challenges faced by gay stars like Hudson are intriguing to explore. In this video, we delve into the revelations made by Hudson's true love, Lee Garlington, shedding light on a truth tinged with sadness about the actor's life, career, and how the pair kept their gay relationship a secret from Hollywood. But before delving into these secrets, let's reflect on Hudson's early life and the trajectory of his rise to fame. Rock, Hudson's life story in a nutshell. Rock, Hudson's journey began in the quiet town of Winnetka, Illinois, where he was born as Roy Harold Scherer, Jr. His parents, Catherine and Roy, Harold Scherer, Sr., played roles in the ordinary backdrop of small-town life. His mother, a telephone operator, and his father, an auto mechanic. However, the harmony of his childhood fractured when his parents divorced when he was just eight years old. As a teenager, Hudson developed a keen interest in the theater, drowned to the allure of the stage. Despite his passion, he faced a significant hurdle. He struggled to secure roles in school plays due to difficulties in memorizing lines, an early challenge that would eventually transform into a testament to his resilience. Upon graduating from high school, Hudson's path took an unexpected turn as he embarked on a stint as a postal worker during World War II. His life took a military hue when he enlisted in the Navy, serving as an airplane mechanic. Post-war, as the world celebrated the Allied victory, Hudson briefly navigated the role of a truck driver. However, the destiny of a Hollywood star awaited him. Hudson, with his towering height, striking good looks, and undeniable charm, found his way into the world of movies. It marked the inception of a transformative phase in his life, prompting the official change of his name to the iconic Rock Hudson. Determined to carve his place in the film industry, he underwent a series of transformations, including dental work, acting lessons, and the acquisition of various skills, such as singing, fencing, and horseback riding. Despite making strides in Hollywood, Rock Hudson continued to grapple with a persistent challenge. Memorizing lines remained an elusive skill. This struggle was glaringly evident in his debut film, 1948's Fighter Squadron, where reports circulated that a staggering 38 takes were required to master a single line. Yet Hudson's tenacity proved to be the hallmark of his journey. Overcoming this initial handicap, he ascended to become one of the most esteemed and sought-after actors of his era. Having achieved stardom, he left an indelible mark with iconic roles in films like 1954's Magnificent Obsession, 1955's Heaven Allows, and 1956's Giant. Undeterred by the passage of time, Hudson continued to bask in success, gracing the silver screen in a string of films. The late 1950s witnessed his charismatic presence in movies such as Pillow Talk, 1959, followed by Send Me No Flowers, 1964, and Tobruk, 1967. Yet as his career progressed, Hudson found himself increasingly disenchanted with the quality of scripts offered to him. In a strategic pivot, he ventured into television, a decision that proved to be both bold and rewarding. The small screen embraced Hudson, and he soared to success as the star of the popular 1971 mystery series Macmillan and Elm Wife. The twilight of his career saw Hudson make a poignant mark with a guest-starring role on the ABC primetime soap Dynasty from 1984 to 1985. Little did the world know that this would be his final bow on the stage, marking the end of an illustrious career that spanned both film and television. The pinnacle of his success manifested in a 1956 Oscar nomination for his role in the film Giant. Just two years later, Look Magazine bestowed upon him the prestigious title of their Star of the Year, solidifying his status as a Hollywood luminary. Amid the pinnacle of his fame in the early to mid-1960s, few Hollywood stars shared a bond as close as Rock Hudson and Lee Garlington. 
Their romantic entanglement, which spanned from 1962 to 1965, remains a poignant chapter in Hudson's personal history. Tragically, Hudson succumbed to AIDS-related complications on October 2, 1985, at the age of 59, marking a somber conclusion to a life that had profoundly impacted the entertainment industry. Notably, Rock Hudson etched his name in history as one of the first public figures to disclose his battle with AIDS. His unwavering commitment to finding a cure thrust him into the international spotlight. Tragically, after his demise, the attention on his sexuality resurfaced when his long-term lover, Mark Christian, successfully sued Hudson's estate. Throughout the majority of his life, Hudson endeavored to conceal his homosexuality, a reflection of the less accepting times. One can't help but ponder how different his journey might have been had he lived in an era more tolerant of diverse identities. Today, as societal attitudes have evolved, the narrative surrounding Rock Hudson's life continues to unfold. Shedding light on the complexities of his personal struggles and the enduring legacy of an actor who dared to challenge societal norms. Rock's relationship with Lee Garlington. Garlington's Hollywood journey commenced as a young extra, yearning for that elusive big break. In the tapestry of his aspirations, a pivotal moment unfolded in 1962 when he first crossed paths with Rock Hudson. To Garlington, Rock epitomized the zenith of film stardom, a luminary casting a colossal shadow over the cinematic landscape. Rumors of Hudson's sexual orientation were rife, prompting Garlington to embark on a personal quest to unravel the enigma. The decision was made. He needed to witness the Legan himself. In a whimsical attempt, Garlington stationed himself outside Rock's cottage on the Universal lot, feigning engrossment in a magazine. Amusingly, the magazine was quite possibly upside down, adding a touch of lightheartedness to the tale. As Rock emerged, leisurely navigating down the street, their eyes briefly locked in a moment that defied grandiosity. No fireworks illuminated the sky, and no explosions of fanfare echoed. Instead, it was a singular glance, an unassuming yet fateful introduction that would etch itself into the annals of their personal histories. In the labyrinth of anticipation and nerves, Garlington found himself at the threshold of Rock Hudson's opulent mansion in Beverly Hills. Standing at an imposing six feet four inches, Hudson's stature matched the grandiosity of his Hollywood legacy. The encounter was a blend of trepidation and hospitality, as Hudson, recognizing the anxious demeanor of his guest, extended a friendly gesture in the form of a beer. Despite the towering presence of the cinematic icon, Lee's anxiety eclipsed his ability to articulate much. Amid the nerves, all he managed to muster was a hasty proposition. Let's get together. To Lee's delight, the response exceeded expectations. Rock Hudson concurred, setting the stage for their subsequent interactions. A routine began to unfold as Garlington found himself becoming a regular visitor to Rock's abode. After the demands of the workday receded, Lee would traverse the familiar path to Hudson's residence, spending evenings immersed in the company of the Hollywood legend. The routine, however, carried a clandestine nuance. Lee would discreetly depart in the early morning hours, navigating the quiet streets in his Chevy Nova with a muted motor, ensuring the neighbors remained oblivious to his departure. In those moments, both Lee and Rock reveled in a sense of cunning, their secret liaison veiled in a cloak of discretion. They went the extra mile, even gracing film premieres as a united front. Yet in a strategic move to veil their concealed romance, they strategically brought female companions to these high-profile events. During an era when revealing one's true self was perceived as professional suicide, Garlington emphasizes that openly embracing their identity wasn't a feasible option. The repercussions, particularly the end of their careers, loomed large. Rock Hudson and Lee Garlington, 
cognizant of the risks, spared no effort in projecting an illusion of heteronormativity. However, amidst their carefully crafted facade, certain discerning individuals were privy to their reality. Garlington shares a memorable encounter with Paul Newman and his wife at a movie premiere, where a knowing smile from Newman conveyed an unspoken understanding. It was a silent acknowledgement that their secret wasn't entirely concealed from those in the know. Intriguingly, Rock Hudson never laid down a mandate for secrecy upon Lee. Initially devoid of paranoia, their relationship unfolded under the unspoken agreement to keep their connection hidden. This mutual understanding became the compass steering them through the intricate dance between love and societal constraints. However, the dynamics shifted when one of Hudson's female admirers unlawfully entered his residence, seizing the opportunity to sleep in his bed during a period when both Hudson and Garlington were away on a road trip. Unbeknownst to the intruder, on Rock's dresser were photos of Lee shirtless, adding an element of vulnerability that left him uneasy. Consequently, this unsettling incident prompted Hudson to fortify his home by installing gates as a security measure. During a conversation with People, Garlington expressed deep regret that his former partner, Rock Hudson, couldn't live his life the way he wanted to. He believes that if Hudson were around today, embracing his identity as a gay man would have brought him much happiness and relaxation. In the 1960s, Hudson faced advice from his agent to avoid taking photos with a boyfriend to prevent public speculation about his sexuality. Mark Griffin, the author of Hudson's biography, All That Heaven Allows, highlighted the challenging situation Hudson was in, emphasizing that coming out as gay at that time would likely have jeopardized his career. This led Hudson to lead a dual life, carefully navigating the delicate balance between his public and private self. Despite the challenges, those who knew him described Hudson as a calm and relaxed individual, Garlington and Hudson shared a profound and beautiful romance, mutually enriching each other's lives. Despite the depth of their connection, they eventually chose separate paths, parting ways in 1965. The strain on Hudson's personal life may have contributed to his breakup with Garlington. According to Garlington, the younger actor sought a father figure in Hudson, who, unfortunately, couldn't fulfill that role. Describing Hudson as a gentle giant with a less assertive personality, Garlington acknowledged the challenges they faced. Eventually, the two lost touch, and when Hudson publicly disclosed his AIDS diagnosis in 1985, they had not communicated for years. Although they gradually lost contact over the years, Garlington cherishes many fond memories of their time together. Learning about Hudson's illness came as a shock to Garlington. In an era when AIDS was often considered a dire prognosis, he attempted to reach out to Rock's caregivers. Unfortunately, they conveyed that Hudson was seriously ill and might not recognize him. Rock Hudson banned Garlington from taking pictures with him. Garlington cherishes a collection of Hudson's photos, carefully stored in an old antique box at his home. However, among these precious memories, only a single surviving image captures of the two together. Garlington reflects on the fact that Hudson permitted only solo pictures, maintaining a deliberate distance from capturing their shared moments. In the years following Hudson's passing, Lee stumbled upon forgotten photographs that unveiled a more intimate side of their relationship. These images were taken during a vacation in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, back in 1963. The duo had chosen this destination based on the recommendation of their mutual friend, Elizabeth Taylor, the iconic actress who had shared the screen with Hudson in the film Giant. In the recollection of their time together, Garlington vividly remembers the carefree moments they shared during a beachside vacation. Strolling along the shore, they would capture candid snapshots of each other, creating a visual narrative of their cherished moments. The pair also embraced the freedom of riding around in an open-air jeep, reveling in the joy of being themselves without the burden of public scrutiny. 
The absence of pesky paparazzi allowed them to savor the spontaneity of these private escapades, shielded from the prying eyes of the outside world. Among the captured memories, one enduring photo stands out, a poignant snapshot taken at a bar in New Orleans. Strikingly, this remains the sole visual testament to their time together. The reason behind this scarcity of shared photos, Garlington reveals, was Hudson's adamant prohibition. The actor, acutely aware of the challenges posed by societal attitudes towards homosexuality, took deliberate steps to prevent any photographic evidence of their relationship. Garlington reflects on an encounter with Hudson's agent, who conveyed a strict directive. Under no circumstances could he be pictured with his boyfriend. The fear was rooted in the potential repercussions on Hudson's career, with the assumption that such an image might reveal his true sexual orientation. Reflecting on the strides made in Hollywood and society at large, Griffin notes the significant progress in embracing diversity and inclusivity. Despite the positive transformations, there is a poignant acknowledgement that Rock Hudson, a trailblazer in his own right, didn't witness the cultural evolution during his lifetime. Griffin expresses regret that Hudson, a figure who left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry, couldn't experience the positive shifts in societal attitudes towards LGBTQ plus individuals. Garlington, echoing these sentiments, emphasizes the challenges Hudson faced in living authentically during an era marked by stringent norms. He underscores the missed opportunities for Hudson to shape his life according to his desires, constrained by the need to conceal his true self. Hudson did not have the opportunity to live his life the way he wanted to, and he had to go around hiding, says Garlington. I wish he had been born 30 or 40 years later. He'd be more relaxed and at ease and it would have been a happier life. He'd also be elated by how much has changed. In this hypothetical scenario, Garlington imagines a happier and more relaxed life for Hudson, unburdened by the societal constraints that defined his time. The sentiment is underscored by the belief that Hudson would be elated to witness the substantial positive changes that have transpired since his passing. Rock Hudson's death brought much-needed awareness to AIDS. In 1985, Rock Hudson succumbed to complications from HIV-AIDS, becoming the first prominent Hollywood figure to die from the disease. Hudson, who had long kept his affliction privately, decided to publicly disclose it, aligning himself closely with the gay community grappling with the epidemic in the 1980s. This revelation who initially feared to jeopardize his career, ended up reshaping the public discourse on AIDS almost overnight. The actor's openness about their diagnosis marked a turning point in public perception of the disease. This shift resulted in a surge of donations, and shortly after Hudson's death, Congress took action by allocating $221 million to fund the development of a cure. Despite being a longtime friend of Ronald Reagan, another former Hollywood actor, Hudson received no assistance from Reagan's wife, Nancy, during her tenure as First Lady. According to BuzzFeed News, in the last months of his life, Hudson ventured overseas in pursuit of an experimental drug from French doctors. Following a collapse in a hotel and subsequent hospitalization in Paris, Hudson's publicist attempted to reach out to the Reagans through a telegram seeking help in securing military-grade medical treatment. However, Nancy Reagan declined to provide assistance. A representative from the Reagan administration argued that they were avoiding favoritism toward personal friends. This incident, nevertheless, underscores the Reagan administration's largely passive stance toward the AIDS crisis in the 1980s. Lee Garlington, reflecting on Hudson's influence, emphasizes the magnitude of this impact. According to Garlington, Hudson's efforts went beyond what the actor might have realized during his lifetime. The disclosure became a catalyst for dialogue and compassion, challenging preconceived notions and fostering empathy towards individuals affected by AIDS. However, what resonated with Garlington on a personal level was a remark he came across years later in a biography about Hudson. 
the iconic Hollywood figure referred to Garlington, his boyfriend from 1962 to 65, as his one true love. Overwhelmed by the sentiment, Garlington found himself in tears. Reflecting on it, he shared, He said his mother and I were the only people he ever loved. I had no idea I meant that much to him. In the years following his relationship with Rock Hudson, Lee Garlington has built a life with his longtime partner, Paul Garlington, spanning an impressive 36 years. Currently, at 87 years old, Lee's journey is a testament to enduring love and commitment. While Lee and Paul have shared decades together, it remains uncertain whether they chose to expand their family through children. Despite being married to another man for 32 years at the time, Garlington's recollections of Hudson as a kind and handsome individual endured. Hudson, briefly married to Phyllis Gates from 1955 to 1958, maintained his privacy regarding his sexuality throughout his life, never publicly coming out of the closet. Despite this, many of his closest friends, including notable figures like Elizabeth Taylor and Marilyn Monroe, were reportedly aware of his lifestyle. The actor's breakthrough came with the 1956 film Giant, where he starred alongside Elizabeth Taylor and James Dean, earning him an Oscar nomination. Throughout his life, Hudson had other relationships with men, with one of the most notable being Mark Christian. Christian entered Hudson's life in 1982, and after Hudson's death, Christian sued the actor's estate. In a successful legal battle, Christian claimed that Hudson never informed him of his AIDS diagnosis and continued to engage in sexual contact after receiving the diagnosis. The lawsuit resulted in a 5.5 million settlement for Christiane. On a different note, the legacy of Rock Hudson has taken an intriguing turn in recent years. There are claims that Hudson may have a biological connection to a woman named Judy Dent. Susan, Judy's mother, made headlines by announcing a lawsuit against Hudson's estate, asserting her daughter's right to inheritance. Reports suggest that DNA tests have indeed confirmed Judy Dent's lineage to be linked with Rock Hudson. Despite this confirmation, the legal resolution of the inheritance claim is still pending, leaving an element of suspense in the ongoing saga of Rock Hudson's posthumous affairs. Rock Hudson's legacy, in recognition of his significant contributions to the worlds of cinema and television, Rock Hudson was posthumously awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Following his passing, his close friend Elizabeth Taylor commissioned a bronze plaque for Hudson, on the West Hollywood Memorial Walk. In 2002, the actor received the prestigious Golden Palm Star on the Palm Springs Walk of Stars. We'd love to hear about your cherished memories of Rock Hudson. Share them with us in the comments section below. And before you go, take a moment to show us some support by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. While you're at it, hit the bell icon to enable notifications. This way, you can stay updated on all our latest and upcoming content. Goodbye for now.